Hi everyone, Lisa from Spellbound Miniatures here. Welcome back to our YouTube channel and today I'm going to do something a little different. I've been inspired by Claire's Crafty Corner also on YouTube. I'll put her link to her channel below. And she's been doing a lot of cool resin and jasmineite projects, um, loads and loads of videos, lots of amazing information um, and, and she has a lot of fun. So do go and check her out. I was feeling like I wanted to do a few things outside of the miniatures world this year. So if you've been following on Patreon, you'll know that um, we recently moved to Spain from the UK and things in the craft world are a little different out here. So I can't, I don't have anything around the corner like Hobbycraft or the range. Everything mostly has to come from Amazon or Etsy. And so you have to really think ahead for things that you need and sometimes the cost of things is a little more out here so it's kind of giving me the opportunity to be a little more resourceful so i saw some really cool little cauldron coasters that claire made um, with a uh, mold that she got from another um, seller and looking at those um, and the time it takes to get here and the cost I thought, hmm, I wonder if I can make that myself. So following another big YouTube dive on how to make your own silicone moulds, I did order some silicone because I figured if this experiment works, I'll want to reproduce it. And I couldn't see if anyone had done this before. So if you have and you're watching, apologies, I didn't know you'd done it. Um, I just had this idea and thought I'd try it. Um, and so let's have a go and follow along with me, see how it works out, and it might be something that you decide to have a go at too. So follow me to Design Space and I'll show you how I first got to this stage. Okay, so we are here in Design Space and this was a free file. So um, if you've got access, great. If not, this was a free pumpkin file. And all we're interested in is the outline which is this one here but this one wasn't in design space this one was so you get this and when you're cutting basically the outline you don't want all these middle lines and they're called contours so you come over to contour down here in the bottom right and you click contour and then you can hide all contours simple as that but you've still got this little bit in here and it will try and cut that. So what I did was just went to shapes, got a circle, made it small enough, put it over that, I don't, yeah, put it over that little cut, selected all of them and then hit weld and that's it and then you have a full outline so I'm just going to go back because to undo that because I'm saving this file so you all can use it if you want to um, if you don't want to do that I've created it and I'll leave it there for you so that's just the outline and then this one which looks rather odd is the negative of this one and i thought if you create this you might want to do a vinyl overlay of this to kind of give you the stripes on the pumpkin i mean you could you could do a vinyl overlay in this one so whichever you wanted to do you could do that over your coaster and you'd still need to put um, another layer of resin on top to seal it in but that's why i've, I've created that one and left that there as well so you could do vinyl overlays but this is the one that I cut from chipboard and it'd be simple as we don't need the other two so we would come over to the layers panel and hide them and then we would just click make it and before you do that you want to make sure it's the size that you want the one I did was four inches wide so this is exactly the size that I cut. Change that if you want it small or larger and then click make it. I made mine from 2mm chipboard on the purple strong grip mat 
taped down all around and I used the knife blade and housing. Um, so that's it. This will be in Design Space under my profile. Um, at the minute it's called Pumpkin Coaster Blanks and Vinyl Overlay. So go look for that under my profile. Now I'm cutting this on one of the original Cricut makers using a knife blade and housing and you want a simple shape, not too complicated and not too many small angles. So here it is, it's all cut out nice and neat, no shredding, no movement, um, always taped down in the corners and then um, these will just pop out. There's no cuts on the back of my mat. Um, they just pop out nice and cleanly. I actually let this run for the full um, amount of passes. I think it's 24. I didn't mean to. I normally stop it before then and hand release the sort of last few layers and the little corners, but um, I can't remember what happened, but I came back and it was finished. So. What I'm doing here is I'm thinking how thick do I actually want to make the mould. I'll be pouring resin in, so I need to make the mould at least as deep as I want my resin coaster. Now, four layers would be eight mil altogether of chipboard. Bearing in mind, you also have glue in between each layer and that does add to the thickness. So I was looking at two and thought it might be too thin and then um, thought about three layers and I ended up, I did go back to two. I didn't want a, a hugely thick coaster and I knew this was just a prototype to sort of prove the method. So um, I went with two in the end, glued two together and I pressed them while they dried. So here's my double layer of chipboard. It will be slightly more than four mil because of the glue layer in between and I decided I work on the edges first and I wanted to get a smooth edge so that when both the silicon mold was at the edge and then the resin in the mold would um, it wouldn't attract air bubbles and would release nicely so I thought I'll go around the edge with some UV resin and set it um, rather than try and use a two-part resin around the edge I didn't know how that would work I know how it works on a flat surface but not around the edge of something. Um, and I thought if I just do it with the UV resin, I can cure it up quickly um, and that should be fine. So this is what I first thought. So I'm going to just pour some out and paint it around the edge. As always, working with resin, wear gloves, wear a mask, but well ventilated area. UV resin to me has a much higher odour than a two-part resin so I just use these little silicone cups which can easily be cleaned out afterwards um, and just as well as wearing gloves because it poured out all right and then glooped back on me um, onto the silicon, uh, not silicon mat there, I've got a sort of Teflon sheet. Uh, I also have silicon mats which are great when working with resin so I'm just going to paint some round and you can see it gets dark, it's, it soaks into the chipboard instantly and it was, it's a bit like super glue like that and it, it went in and I thought oh well that's okay it's soaking in, um, maybe I'll do a layer that soaks in and then the next layer will sit on top to give me that shiny surface. So I kind of painted it all round and um, then set it under my UV lamp and um, I'll speed this bit up because all I'm basically doing is I'm just painting it around the edge first, setting it under the lamp and then carrying on. So I'll speed this bit up and then you'll see me. I also think, oh, while I'm here, I might as well cover the top as well. So I start covering the top, holding on to the stem, um, just doing the top first. Then I put it all under the UV lamp for about 90 seconds um, and then I start going back round again over the edges to try and um, see if I can get a nice shiny edge and then once the body had set I then kind of held on to the body and painted the stem and I did the back uh, oh no I didn't do the back on this one I had two prototypes you know I cut four pieces so I did two prototypes to see 
um, if I did two different methods. So this one I painted around the edge and I suddenly worked out if I paint and put it under the UV lamp quite quickly, I got a better edge than if I painted more and left it longer. So that was another thing. If you're going to do this method, just do a little bit of UV and then set it and another bit of UV and or cure it, sorry, at a time. Um, so that was a bit of trial and error. And on the other one, I simply gave that a coat of PVA glue all over first. This is the one on the right. Um, gave it a coat of PVA glue. Um, no UV resin on this one. So here they are. Um, that one's got the nice shiny UV edges. This is the PVA coated one with nothing on the edges other than PVA glue. I've got a two part epoxy resin. And even though this one's got UV resin on top, I'm going to put a layer of epoxy on it. Um, I didn't like the streaks that the UV resin gave me. So I'm going to mix up the resin. It's one a ratio of one to one. So um, make sure you've got your gloves on, protect your work surface and mix your resin. Simply uh, because it's one to one and not by weight, it's by measurement. So you measure out um, the equal parts, mix them together for the recommended time. Um, and I'll speed this bit up because you've probably seen a hundred videos of people mixing resin by now. And one thing I always have on hand um, when using resin is alcohol wipes. They're so handy for cleaning up anything and your tools. So I've swapped out um, the Teflon sheet for my silicone mat now because these are so great. If resin spills on them, it just peels off when it's cured. Got my resin mixed up. Um, and it's just sat there for a minute or two to let any big bubbles come up to the surface. It's uh, This is only a cheap resin from Amazon. Um, it's, I don't have a lot of selection or choice here in Spain. So I'm just going to pour a little puddle on the top. It's self-leveling and you don't want to do too much because I don't want it to flood over the sides and drip down. So put that on see how it settles out and then what you're going to do is i just drag it to the edges but not over the edge and it it's quite clever how it does it 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 sort of stops at the edge um and just stays there i don't know it's like like surface tension but edge tension Just smooth it out and it self levels. It's really nice stuff to work with resin. Just so I go all the way around. And then if, if it started pulling back and there were gaps, you know, you haven't got enough resin on there. So um, I pulled it all the way around first. And as long as it's got a nice shiny, slightly domed surface, then that's what you're looking for. And then once I've done that one, I went and did the second piece again on the top only. Um, and I didn't actually end up using the second piece, but um, excuse my head there. Um, did that the same, bearing in mind this still hasn't got anything on the edges, but I might use this piece again in the future. I had already mixed the resin, so I did that as well. And then made sure there weren't any bubbles on the top and you can use a long necked lighter to get rid of any bubbles if you have any. So now we're getting to the exciting bit of creating a mould. Wearing gloves again because we're dealing with silicone this time. The acrylic dried amazingly, beautifully smooth and shiny. Because this has got the shiny edges, I went with this one to make the mould. I'm using a cookie cutter again from Amazon just a basic tin of round cutters and I've used sellotape on the bottom I didn't have any pack well I had some packing tape but it wasn't very sticky and I tried using Cricut transfer paper and that wasn't sticky either the sellotape was the stickiest um, this is off Amazon a two-part 
silicon resin and I lost the instructions and I tried to Google them and couldn't find it. But it does say on the bottle 1A, 1B. So it's one, one for one and it doesn't say by weight. Um, and those two cups came with it. So I'm measuring the same amount of part A and B, just like the resin. Haven't got a clue how much I need. So I'm guessing it. Um, and if it came to it, I could quickly pour some more and add it into the top. Um, I think I did slightly too much, but that's better than not enough. Um, and you can see there, I've also pressed the pumpkin shape down onto the sellotape because you don't want silicone going underneath, but the shiny side up because that's actually going to create the top of your mold. You're kind of working in like a negative here. So make sure that the shiny side's up and then you get a nice shiny mold. If you have a matte uh, master or a faux acrylic blank that this is, or a resin blank, you'd get a matte mold. And I considered just doing the, the pumpkin mold matte because I know I'm going to want to, I wanted to create a druzy center. And I thought, oh, if I had a matte pumpkin, the druzy would stand out more. So um, I might do that another time and purposefully create a matte mold. But this time I wanted a shiny one. So going with shiny, pour the two parts in and then mix them. And, I, and as I said, I didn't have the instructions. So I thought, well, it's probably like resin. So I mixed it for five minutes and then let it to stand for a couple. Um, it, well, I know this isn't a rapid silicone. It's not like I've got only 20 minutes working time or something. Um, this was like hours to set up. So um, again, I'll speed up the mixing bit and then we'll come back for the pouring. Okay, you'll pour from a height with silicon. This probably isn't high enough um, and it does self gas. So it releases its own bubbles. Apparently we had some issues, but we'll see that later. Um, it, um, I just poured it in. There's not much else to do. Um, you can give it a little sort of wiggly sh shaky tap thing in to release any bu uh, bubbles, but be careful because where you've got your blank stuck to the bottom. You don't want to dislodge that. So I just lift this up to check there's no silicon seeping underneath the blank. And we've got to do nothing but wait now, which is the really, really hard bit. Okay, it's the next day. It's nice and firm. I had a tiny weeny leak. And that's probably when I picked it up. There's nothing underneath. But when I picked it up to check, I think a little bit started to leak through where the sellotape was joined onto itself. But thankfully, nothing major. The sellotape's left a little sticky mark on the outside of the mold. Um, I cleaned that off with some alcohol wipes, so that's fine. So I'm just peeling it off. And this is thin layer, you know, thin strips of sellotape. I didn't have anything wider. I'll get some for next time. But it did a fairly good job, actually. I didn't have to use the hot glue gun around it. Uh, just a little fiddly to get it off the most i think the the most awkward thing was waiting and waiting and i kept poking it to see if it had set yet um so i'd love to find some faster curing silicone i don't know that i'm going to invest in one of those um pressure pots um and things i'm not going to be doing that much of it this is just some trial and error stuff for me at home anyway sellotape pulled off lovely the silicone, um, the blank was just ready to fall out. So that wasn't an issue. And the silicone just pushed out of the um, cookie cutter mold as well. There comes the blank. And look at that lovely shiny mold. Awesome. And I was just checking. It's, it's, it's set nice. There's some little pucker marks around the edges where when it was doming um, up to the edge, I probably could have put a little more on, but as I said, this is just my first trial um, to try the method. I will be doing it again now, um, but so yeah, push it out of the 
cookie cutter just be a little careful it's quite robust but you don't want to damage it or tear it and I was really really pleased like I said it's probably a bit thicker than it needs to be but it's firm and it won't deform so the next thing is to leave it 24 hours because I think silicon has to do something like cure again because if you imagine the bit of the mold that was in touch with the blank hasn't been exposed to the air like the top of it had so it's a good idea to let your um, silicone mold just cure up again for another 24 hours before you pour resin in if you've got any um, sort of hanging over bits uh, use a cuticle remover they're really easy to slide around the outside and just trim off anything also use this to make sure the bottom of the mold is flat so that when you pour the resin the resin will be level as it sets okay so finally it's the big day we're going to pour the resin i'm just checking my mold to put any bits of lint i've trimmed up the edges it's nice and level ish you can see some sellotape lines but that's not in the mold itself you might be asking why haven't i just poured acrylic um resin sorry onto the that pump blank pumpkin and done a pattern and made a coaster from that well Pouring resin into a mould allows you to add in things like glitter, allows the light to shine through, allows you to light things up if you wanted to. And so you could definitely make a coaster from the chipboard pumpkin and add, add resin and all sorts on it. But I actually want to be able to use the mould again and again in the future, theoretically. OK, on to the exciting bit, the Druzy. I did buy this on Etsy from someone in the Netherlands. I'll put a link in the description box where I got it. Oh, there we are, handily. Uh, Silicon Mold Studios. It was a set of three. This was kind of the one that I felt suited this shape best. Now, it's very thick and you could put it in the bottom and pour resin on top, but I want the top of my mold. Um, it's very difficult. Which is the top and which is the bottom? <laughs> I want the top of my coaster to be flat, so I can't have a druzy in the top of my coaster. And this is probably, here's an English expression for you, ask about face, but I decided to do it this way and it's probably the most convoluted way, but it actually achieved the effect that I wanted, so bear with me. I decided rather than use it as an as the silicone as an inlay i was going to use the silicone as a mold and create an inlay a resin inlay from the silicone without putting the silicone in the mold and i know i could have put mica powder on that druzy and dropped it in upside down i didn't want to do that either so this is what i did and it worked i got some um mica powders this is a lovely bronze colored one and i'm going to brush it all over the druzy i will be creating my own druzies at some point but this was the one thing that i thought oh my goodness if i'm going to buy anything i'm just going to buy the druzy um so yeah oh, here we go with my silicone mat again and i'm about to use there we go spill it I don't need gloves for the mica powder, that's harmless. It's not like eyeshadow. So um, brush it on, get it in all the crevices. It's glorious stuff. And I didn't want the actual druzy to be as thick as this druzy, the inlay, because my coaster isn't that thick. So I kind of do it on the top and a little bit round the edges. And I've got my gloves on now because I'm about to use resin. I've got my UV lamp. This is just one I did use for my gel nails. And I've got some UV resin. Again, this is just one off Amazon, nothing special. And I don't know that I've seen anyone do this, so I can't blame anyone for this random idea. But what I'm going to do is pour the UV resin on top of the mica powder 
on top of the silicone druzy. And this is why you need a silicone mat because the druzy doesn't have raised edges for it to dome. It has all kinds of edges. And so some of them are like valleys and the resin will just run off of them. But I felt doing it this way, I had more control over no bubbles in this inclusion, I'm going to call it, but it will inlay. Whereas if I'd taken the druzy with mica powder, turned it upside down and just plonked it in my resin as it's in the mold, I didn't know how that I would not trap a lot of air bubbles. So that's why I'm doing it this way. As always, have your alcohol wipes on hand. Um, they're great for cleaning the tools as well. So this is a silicone tipped tool that I also use for polymer clay shaping and things like that. So I'm literally pulling the silicone into the nooks and crannies of the druzy, not trying to stir up the mica powder because I don't want that in the silicone. Um, and you can see there it's starting to drip off the edge. That's fine. It's a silicone mat. I'm just going to scrape it back up, put it back on so we don't want to waste any. Uh, I just want to get to the point where there's enough resin on the top here without any bubbles in it and then I can set it. So that's all I'm doing. Um, if I see any air bubbles that have got trapped under the resin, I just will poke the silicon tool in to release them. I don't want a massive, massive coat here. I can always do another coat. I just want to get one on with no bubbles. And then the second coat isn't going to create any because it's just going over resin. So it's just a case of being patient, letting the resin settle, release the bubbles as they come up, clean off the resin from your tools as soon as you're done. And then I'm literally going to bring my sun lamp in. I've taken the bottom off of it. It's a, like a magnetic bottom, so you can put it straight over pieces. And I put it on 60 seconds and then I can see that there's quite a lot of um, smoke like reaction happening from the resin, probably because it's quite thick. This lamp has a slow mode where it starts off gently and, and then increases intensity. So I switched it onto that. Um, so that's all that happened. We're waiting for that to count down. You can't see it on the video. Um, but I'll speed for, speed forward to the end of this. Okay, when you're happy it's set, and I did keep going in with my little tool to check it was set. You can peel it off the mat. It's got the overspill on there, but actually that's quite handy to use as handles for handling it and not putting fingerprints on it. But um, you can see it's fairly level. It was um, There's a few sticky up bits, so I go in now with the second coat um, that would be much easier. It's just a, a very simple layer, not too many things sticking up. I just want to create a thick enough layer that I can insert this in the coaster, but not too thick that it's thicker than the coaster. So I create a second layer when I'm happy there's no air bubbles in it and it's all level. And do give it time to self-level. You wouldn't want to just pour it and shove it under the, the lamp. Take it to the edges and let the middle of it self level. So and then I put it under the lamp again. So this is the second time and I'm pretty happy with that. So this is the exciting bit now. I'm going to peel the resin inclusion off of the silicone um, and I don't know how the sides are going to turn out haven't done this before so let's peel it off I was worried it could tear because it's very thin and resin um, isn't quite as flexible as silicone so I was very careful just releasing it around the edges, almost pulling the silicon away from the resin. And look at that, it really worked. So now I've got a flat bottom on the other side of, that we're looking at now of resin that can just go in to my coaster like that. 
and it's kind of an extra step to just putting mica powder on the silicon and put it in upside down but I, I really didn't want it there bubbles so I don't know it didn't take that long was it it's a, it's a couple of minutes with the UV resin so here I, I am just cleaning up my workspace so we'll fast forward so again it's a two-part resin just like we coated the chipboard blanks in um one-to-one -one ratio and i'm guessing the amounts because i don't know what the coast is going to take and you can measure it with water but i always have little mini molds on the side when i'm doing with resin so to make like some earrings or cabochons and things so i'm not that worried if i mix a little extra so i mix up the resin and i'm here i am deciding how much to go for and i can't even remember now so your mold will be different just mix up some resin and i think for this one i did two lots actually uh, so one lot of resin but two different colors so i did i used the same bronze powder that i used on the inclusion on the inlay with some bronze glitter and then i used some pearlescent white mica powder and some white glitter in the body of the pumpkin so let's skip forward to that bit Oh, it was gold glitter in with the bronze mica powder because I wanted the stalk to match the inclusion and then I used my sort of pearlescent mica powder and I also used some white titanium white plain acrylic paint so it was a nice white glittery um, resin for that one and then the mica powder actually made the bronze coppery bronze color it's definitely more of a copper isn't it um quite thick which i wanted so i poured that into the stalk end and then i pulled the white into the main body end and i knew there would be some migration between the two resins but with all of that bronze bronzy coppery mica powder and glitter i also knew it would be quite dense so it would likely hold its own and it's in a thinner bit of the stalk as well so um i knew they'd have some crossover but and i didn't mind that but I, I, I ideally wanted the main body of the pumpkin to be this lovely shimmery pearlescent white and the stalk to remain coppery bronze and i didn't fill the body up too much because we're putting the inlay in so i knew that would then sink down and displace some resin as well so i'm just going around the edge with a stick here to release any air bubbles that might be around the edge and, and across the middle because i can't see them because it's opaque but they would be on the bottom anyway so it's not a huge issue And then I'm going to go back in and top up the stalk in glitter and mica powders do amazing things in resin they sort of do striations and they just have amazing effects and then I I didn't want the white to go into the stalk I didn't mind if the stalk came down onto the white you know like how 
they sort of have a, an extra skirt, don't they, at the bottom of the stalk. So I did pull some of the, the coppery bronze down into the white to create that sort of, and there's probably a biological name for it, the skirty thing at the bottom of the stalk. So that's what I do now, some faffing. And then here I am cutting the excess bits off of the inlay and then I sink it in just like that. And it's like instant gratification. I'm crossing my fingers there that, that that's okay because like I haven't done this and I can't remember seeing anyone do it. So I'm just winging it. I'm sure they have because there's so many resin artists, but um, I hadn't seen one. So... I think that here I'm like, okay, I, I need a little bit more white now. I can put some more white in. Um, I didn't want to do too much white. I didn't mind if the white encroached into the inlay a little bit because it's almost too perfectly round there. And I wanted it a little bit or, more organic. So um, as I put more white in, it does start to creep in around the edges. And, and I'm fine with that. So I'm just going very, very carefully. But at least now I can see the inclusion, whereas if I turned the druzy upside down with the mica powder on it, I would be worrying at this point, have I got bubbles? Is the mica powder going into the white, etc. So, and now I just do more faffing now with the stalk. So once I'm happy that it's looking good and it will change as it dries, it won't end up like this, clean off my tools and then I'm going to use the uh, long neck lighter to just release any air bubbles on the surface and then I cover it and then we have to wait and it's the longest 24 hours of my life nearly waiting for this thing to finish because I know I'm going to need to top coat it and wait another 24 hours. Oh my god. If you're still here, thank you. We've got to the exciting point where I can demold this. I know I've got to do more work on it, but look at that. A little bit more of the white crept in than maybe I'd have liked. So next time I'll make the inclusion a bit thicker, but for a first result, I was really happy. Pops out nicely then I saw some really random things. Look at these nobbles around the edge. And they weren't there on the master. And I don't remember them being there when I first took it out. But anyway, look at the back of that. If you wanted a shiny back, that has worked perfectly. Those colours, the mica powders, look really cool from this side. But look at that shiny. Isn't that amazing? So that works resin on chipboard makes an ideal blank except for what happened on the edges i don't know if it was the silicon degassing that caused this or was it pouring the resin in too soon because when i took the blank out and i've had i've watched this videos back i can't see these little micro bubbles at the edge so i don't know if this happened once i poured the resin in but then the silicone was cured. So maybe this was here and I didn't see it. So this is something to investigate on my next go round with this process. But the blank was clean um, and it was just fresh resin. And it might be that it's the UV resin had this effect because that was what was on the edges. So that is yet to be resolved. But here's the edge. It's smooth as. So... We're going to try that again, but in this instance, it added a really cool, knobbly 
effect on the edge of my pumpkin coaster and it actually adds to the overall Halloween vibe. So I need to put the mold down and get over it now because it's actually really cute. Look at that little gaudy Halloween novels. So that worked. So the next thing, obviously, because I've got Druzy surface on the top now, that's the bottom, I'm going to do a clear coat of resin, doming it now to give me a surface to put my cup of tea on. So that's what I'm going to do. And then we'll come back finally with the results. And here it is. Beautifully, beautifully shiny. There's one little inclusion sticking up, but it's not enough to even affect how my cup of tea sits on it. I'm loving the novels, the striations in the stalk from the mica powders. Um, and I'm just loving the, the very simple colour combination here of the white and the copper. And I've put the light on now so you can see a little bit more of the facets that even though I've resined over the top of them, you still get that effect through. Um, you do see it better in the, in with your naked eye than on video camera because there's some beautiful multicolored rainbow mica in that pearlescent white that you can't see on video as well. So all I'm going to do is get the little um, sticky bumper things um, I'm going to put one on the stalk. I'm only going to put three on because three creates like a tripod so that whatever surface you put it on, it's even. So I'm going to put three of those on the back and then it will be nice and stable to put my cup of tea on. So there we are. I'm super pleased with that. I'm going to try it again. I'm definitely going to make some Christmas ones um, so I, I can bore you with another video. Hopefully it won't be as long as this one next time. Um, thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoyed it and maybe feel inspired to get your cricket out and have a go making these yourself. Take care and I'll see you soon.